You welcome to this session. This is Light Academy Nasser and Primary School. This is Chia Roberts presenting a lesson in Primary 6 about factors. We have so far looked at some other issues, but for the purpose of this session, I want to revise with you, dear learners and the viewers, about what we are calling factors. So this work was done in primary five, but of course we shall need to go over it in this class of primary six. But before you proceed, before you go to the greatest common factors, I need us to first brainstorm or talk about factors. What are factors? In your primary five, your teacher must have told you that factors are those numbers that can divide another number without giving a remainder, okay? So we can simply say that factors are those numbers that can exactly divide, divide some other numbers given without giving a remainder. You must have also looked at the ways of getting the factors, probably. We can divide and get the factors of a number, or we can refer to the multiplication tables and cite out the pairs of numbers which can be multiplied and you get the number which is given. Right. So let me just start from this point here of listing the factors. We can talk about listing the factors. Listing factors. There are some common questions here. They can say, I can have these examples here. The first one they say, list all the factors, all the factors of 18. We are listing the factors of 18. What does this question mean? It is telling us, get those numbers that can exactly divide up 18. You pick out numbers which can divide 18 without giving a remainder. But at this level of primary 6 without wasting time, we are just going to refer to the multiplication table. Pick out the pairs of numbers, two of them, such that when you multiply two numbers, the answer you get, the product you get is 18. What am I going to do? I can say factors of 18, f of 18, which shall be equivalent to, I start. Be referring to the multiplication table. The first number to be multiplied and the answer is 18. The first pairs, one multiplied by 18. The answer we get is 18. Therefore, 1 and 18 are factors of 18, meaning I can divide 18 by 1 and I get the answer as 18. I can also divide 18 by 18 such that the answer I get is 1. So 1 and 18 are factors of 18. The next pair is 2 multiplied by 9. Okay? I still get the answer as 18. Meaning 2 can divide 18 and each person gets 9. And 9 is a factor of is a factor of 18 because when I divide 18 by 9, I get 2. I've not got a remainder in any of those cases. Then the other pair is 3 multiplied by 6. The answer I get is 18. So 3 and 6 are factors of 18. So our dear learners, these are the only pairs of numbers that I can multiply and their answer is 18. Therefore, we can say that factors of 18 are, we can put them in this bracket and list them. I'm having 1 as a factor, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18, it's solved. So, our dear learners, these are the factors of 18. Why? If I pick one and I say 18 apples, give them to one child. The child takes all of them. 18 divided by 2, each one gets 9. 18 divided by 3, each one gets 6. 18 divided by 6, each one gets 3. 18 divided by 9, each one gets 2. 18 divided by 18, each one gets 1. So all of these ones are the factors of 18. That is listing the factors. 
I don't want to take a lot of time with listing the factors. However, at this level of primary six, they can also set a question using these factors and say, find, I can use this second example here. Yeah? They say, find the sum, find the sum of the factors the factors of 16 okay in the question they have talked about sum and factors so what i'm going to do we we'll first interpret this question find the sum of the factors of 16 of 16 in the first place you must understand we must mention the factors of 16 so we shall say f of 16 shall be equal to shall be equivalent to we list the pairs of numbers such that when you multiply them, their answer is 16. So the first pair is 1 multiplied by 16. The answer button is 16. Okay? The next pair using our application table, we say 2 multiplied by 8. We shall have the answer as 16. Meaning the 2 and 8 are factors of 16. Then the other one shall be 4 multiplied by 4. The answer button is also 16. So using our multiplication table concept, these are the only pairs of numbers that can be multiplied and their product is 16. Therefore, we shall mention all of them and say factors of 16. We shall say this are equal to. The first one is 1, the next one is 2, the next one is 4. Don't repeat 4. Then the other one is 8. The other one is 16. I have listed all the factors of 16, but I have not answered the question completely. They wanted us to get the sum of the factors. Therefore, how you can use this part, the side work here, then I will come and get the sum of those factors I have just listed. We shall have them as this is a 2 plus 4. Excuse me. We shall start from 1 plus our second factor 2 plus our third factor 4 plus the next one which is 8 then, then plus the next one which is 16. When we add all of these ones here, what are we getting? This is a 3, 7, 15. 15 plus 16, that gives us it at 1. So the sum of all the factors of 16 becomes 31. Okay? So we can see how we can use the concept of listing factors to answer some other questions. I would be in position to give some other related questions, but because of time, you meet them in your activity and try them using that idea. Okay? So I want us also to go and revise something concerning the greatest common factor greatest common factor the greatest common common factor it is always written in short as gcf gcf but equally it can be at times used as hcf okay these two words here these two abbreviations, they give us the same meaning. So we can say greatest common factor. In short, we can write it as GCF or HCF. HCF refers to the highest common factor. Using our previous concept of primary five, when we talk about greatest common factor, what does it mean? Greatest common factor is a comparison of numbers, they can be two, three, and more. But what is important is to list their factors, compare the common factors, and pick out the greatest or the biggest factor of those numbers that are given. But at this level of primary five, six, of primary five, we need to understand when I talk about the greatest common factor, I mean the number. The biggest number after comparing all the factors of the given numbers. But I should also be reminded, or we must remember, that in primary five, there was a fact of what we call the lowest common factor. 
the opposite of greatest common factor is lowest common factor. And we said, or you must have said, that the lowest common factor of any numbers given is always one. Whether they are three or two or three or four and so on, the lowest common factor is always one. That is a fact about uh, common factors. Then when we come to the greatest common factor, I've just said it is a comparison that looks at the biggest factor for the numbers given, either two or three or more numbers, okay? We can at times use the word GCF to mean greatest common factor, or some other time we can use HCF to mean the highest common factor. But at this level of primary six, let us basically go over this, these four examples and see what we do. We can look at these examples here. The first question is, find the GCF, find the GCF, the GCF of 18, of 18, oh, what, no, excuse me, I can use 12, of 12 and 8. I'm comparing the two numbers, greatest common factor of 12 and 8. What am I supposed to do? In this case, I am just supposed to use the method that shoots this class. And the method we're going to use is the ladder. Some other people can do it in other ways, but let us use the ladder method. These are two numbers, so we are just going to draw up two columns. There are two columns here. These two columns. Then we shall indicate the numbers given. We have a 12. We also have a number 8. Those are the two numbers that have been given. So they want us to compare their factors and get out their greatest common factors. Using this ladder, it has two columns because I'm given two numbers. So in, when I'm using the ladder to get the greatest common factor or the highest common factor, I look at a smaller number which can divide both the numbers, like for this question, there are two. So I must get a smaller number or the smallest number to start with that can divide either 12 or 8 without giving a remainder at the same time. That number should divide both of these two numbers that I've given without a remainder. So since both of them are even numbers, the smallest number which can divide them is 2. Please don't start from 1 because when you start dividing from 1, you'll maintain the same number. So I'm going to start with a 2. So I will say, how many 2's can I get from 12? Meaning the 12 divided by 2, each one gets a 6. Then how many 2's can I get from 8? I get that one as a 4. Okay? That one has given me the second step. So I also look at 6 and 4 at the second step. Which number can divide both of them without giving a remainder? I can use the question. Then I say, how many twos can I get from six? For well, six divided by two, the answer is a three. Then how many twos can I get from four? Or well, four divided by two, still the answer is two, right? So when I reach this level here, I compare the numbers at the third step, they are three, and two. When I look at them, I cannot get a common number which can divide both of them at that level without giving me a remainder. So what am I supposed to do? Since I cannot find a common number to divide both of them, I will just stop at that. Please don't be mistaken and you say yes, we can use one. When you use one, it maintains the same step, so we cannot use it. So for that case, what are we supposed to do? Since we cannot find a common number to share them again, we shall stop and get the product of the numbers that we've used for matrix for dividing. So we shall multiply the first two multiplied by the second two. So our GCF shall be gotten, our GCF shall be gotten by saying two multiplied by two. Those two numbers are used to divide. 12 and 18. So I will get this one as a 4. Therefore, the GCF of these two numbers becomes a 4. Or the HCF, right? We can also pick one more other question and see 
was not so deadly inside. So probably the question could be the same now they say that say work out the question says work out the HCF the HCF of four okay eight and six okay in the first example about the greatest common factor we use the two numbers but in the second one there are three numbers so what am i supposed to do i'm supposed to use the ladder that is what i've chosen to use at this level 56 there are three numbers therefore i'm going to draw up three columns like this the three columns like this like this then I will put in the numbers that I'm defining. I'm actually finding there HCF. The first one is four. The second one is eight. The last one is six. Okay. Just like we've done it in the first case, we shall compare the factors of all the three numbers. Pick out a certain number which can divide all of these three numbers at the same time without giving a remainder. Be careful. When we are using the ladder to get the HCF or the greatest common factor, you pick a smallest number, not one, but any other smallest number which can divide all of the numbers given at the same time without a remainder. So these ones, all of them are even numbers. I can use the two. Then I will ask myself, how many twos can I get from four? So the answer is two. When I divide 8 by 2, how many 2's do I get from 8? The answer becomes 4. Then when I divide 6 by 2, or oh, how many 2's can I get from 6? Of course they are 3, right? Now this one has brought me to the second level, to the second step. Where I'm having numbers as 2, 4 and 3. But when I check all of these 3 numbers at the second step, I cannot find a common number to divide all of them at the same time. So what are we supposed to do? Since I cannot get a number or a common number to divide them at the same time without a remainder, I will just stop at that and instead write the number I used to divide at the start. So we shall simply say HCF, HCF of 4 8 and 6 is equal to the 2 which I used for the first time to divide. Okay? So I think we can look at the difference between our putting the answer for the first one and the answer for the second one. Because of time, I will not go beyond this far, but I want you to at least study what we've actually gone through. Then at the end of it all, you will attempt some questions that are going to appear at the end of this lesson. Otherwise, I thank you for, this, for listening and attending to this session. I remain Teacher Robert, activity under this lesson. Thank you so much. This is the activity that you're going to answer after the lesson. Hope you'll do it and you'll enjoy it. Stay home, stay home, stay safe. Don't forget to follow us on Light Academy webpage for more of this work. Thank you so much for listening to this session.